your profession! Welcome to another video. So Jonathan asked in the last video how to grow vital lats. And I just want to say that uh, in no way am I special. I'm not that special at all. In no way do I know everything. Um, all I can do is share what I have learned in the last decade of lifting with you guys from science and from anecdotes of other much more experienced coaches than I. Um, and of course, please take away what you will. Uh, there is a lack of, we don't, we don't have perfect, credible research on everything. Uh, that has been pretty hard for us to achieve, even though we've gone so far in society. But I think that because of that, it seems reasonable to use experience and professional anecdotal evidence from these um, high class experienced coaches and bodybuilders such as Harry Rambot to like fill in the gaps. Of course, given that you account for body types and gear usage and genetics and stuff, but in no way should you ever, ever feel discouraged or feel like you can't reach something great simply because of your body type or your genetics or, oh, I don't have access to gear. Like if someone, if, if, if someone or any of you guys doesn't have access to gear. I see no reason why you should be comparing yourself to anyone else. I had this podcast with Tristan Lee like a few days ago. We we're saying that both he and Tristan and I were uh, inspired by Cal Von Mager, bro. And that guy's huge and crazy and fucking so sick. But like, you know, of course we also knew that like he's Mr. Universe and he's not natty. But I mean, it didn't really change our perspectives and it def definitely didn't change Tristan you know he's just this young kid who just decided to try to stay as shredded as possible but he still reached his own form of greatness and his own like peak physique even though he doesn't look like Callum so I don't see why we should be comparing ourselves and uh, feeling like we can't achieve something great anyways I'm uh, week 22 of my bulk right now for my first pro debut and I am about to run to zoo to hit this back workout and I'm going to show you guys these exercises that are most optimal for wider lats. Yeah. Oh, and I, I guess I woke up at 185 this morning, which is the same as last week, but it was, um, this weekend was like a lot of activity and I did a lot of walking and a lot of extra steps. So I noticed that I woke up this week drier. All right, so the lats are responsible for shoulder abduction, medial rotation, and extension. So this is extension, this is abduction, and then medial rotation. And so essentially, anywhere that you place your arms, whether or not it's from your side or to your front, as long as you're driving your elbows towards your hips, you are engaging your lats. So if you flap like a bird, then you look like you're engaging your lats. Uh, so I guess if you think about the diagram of a lat, there's three sections. They separate out the fibers into three different sections. So the top is a thoracic, the medium, the middle is the lumbar, and then the bottom is, there you go. And then the bottom is the, um, uh, uh, the iliac. And so there was a study by, uh, at all actually concluded that um, when you have your arms at 120 degrees you actually have half the engagement that you do when your arms are at 60 degrees which basically states and concludes that any of those like full stretch exercises that you see bodybuilders doing is not one that actually works for the lats it may work for some other muscle groups but not unfortunately for the lats so for lats you don't actually have to go all the way up here and then go all the way back down and the interesting thing about that too is that the um, vertical vertical pulls, I guess you could call it, yeah, vertical pulls or straight arm pull downs, like these or like lat pull downs, will actually be a little bit more effective than doing just simple rows for the upper fibers of your lat, which are the uh, thoracic fibers, simply because 
the row actually limits you doing that stretch to the 120 degree position, which obviously is going to give you a, uh, a smaller range of motion. So the lats are actually 50-50 in like fast switch and slow switch fibers. So you could probably safely assume, even though each person varies, you can't really know exactly what uh, percentage or ratio your fibers are unless you get your muscles biopsied, which I don't think anyone's gonna do because that's just pretty expensive. So you can just experiment with different rep ranges, but you can probably safely assume that um, a combination of low reps and high reps, of course, anywhere between like, say the ranges of like eight to 20, wherever people find the most um, hypertrophic, hypertrophic response, hypertrophic, hypotrophic response. Will probably be most optimal for you. So, for this exercise, I'm gonna be hitting the four exercises. Best to bias and isolate, focus your lat growth, dog. So, first one is going to be the most classic, the best one of all, the, the best one that's probably, not probably, why do I keep saying this? It's the best one to hit progressive overload given that you can at least hit it in a reasonable rep range from eight reps at the minimum. And that's gonna be medium grip pull-ups. One of Dr. Mike Isretel's favorites, especially for a primary movement. Love that guy. Basically, he also states that uh, it's gonna be the easiest one for you to progressive overload. If you want to make sure that you focus on your lats properly, then you're gonna to want to keep your elbows at 15 degrees in front of you rather than like a full 45 or 90. That way you're still engaging a good level of induction. Yeah, all right. Okay. This is another set. Oh yeah. <sighs> My coach is trying to tell me to do these for like 14 to 18 reps. I'm like, bro, you can even do proper wide grip pull-ups for 14 to 18 reps with three second eccentrics. No fucking chance. Ooh. Oh yeah. So assuming that upright is 180 degrees, the more upright you are, the more you're gonna hit your lower lats, which is your iliac fibers. The more uh, tilted backwards you are, the more you're gonna hit your upper fibers which is your thoracic fibers. And so, if you are angled at 145 degrees, which is going to be just perfectly right there in the middle, uh, a study by Boak, Burns, and Buskies has shown that that has a 11% increase in engagement. However, one thing that I've noticed personally, wait, sorry, that's not 145, that's 135 degrees. But yeah, one thing I've noticed personally for me is I actually like to go a little bit less tilted backwards because I feel like it helps me engage my, my entire lat more. It might be more of my lower lats that I'm feeling. And obviously this is just a feeling, typical bodybuilding, mind to muscle type shit. But I still go pretty damn close to 135 degrees, which is what the study says is the most optimal angle for the most engagement. So, now addressing the man's question from this morning, quote unquote, this morning as in the beginning of the video. Wide lats. Something I've noticed is that it seems like when most people want to grow their lats, they always want to grow the width and the V taper of the lats. And this is something that I don't see people address often, right? So, looking at all the content that we've seen in the industry, say that you search on YouTube, or whatever shit you see pop up on TikTok or Instagram, it always seems that people just talk about the science of lat engagement and they throw in some studies and shit. But if you look at the diagram of lat, what comprises most of the side of the lat? What, comp what 
comprises most of the part that you see from the front, right? And the part that you see from the front always ends up being a majority of the lower lat and some of the middle lat. Okay, so, so to grow those big ass fat wings, bro, those big ass fat wings, I got three more exercises for you because these exercises are going to help you target your lower lats or your iliac fibers just a little tiny bit more. The first exercise out of these three exercises is going to be the juiciest, the sexiest, everyone's all-time favorite to look like a fucking humongosaurus. That's heavy as shit. Is by the way, for today's workout, I'm, I'm doing I'm supposed to be doing about 12 to 16 reps. It's like a medium rep. This exercise is the kneeling single arm lat pull down with a tiny little lat tuck. So you essentially just go on your knees, just like this, stretch. See, it's not a full stretch. It doesn't go like 280 degrees. So I'm not trying to call anyone out or anything, but there's a TikTok that I actually saw where this guy is telling the ladies and he's doing this uh, single arm lat pull down. And he's telling them, ladies, do not crunch at the bottom. Stop doing that. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't reach anything. Ladies, if your goal is slim thick, I need you to stop scrolling. This exercise is amazing to build your lats and make your waist look smaller, but you need to stop crunching to the side while driving your elbows down. Instead, lean back slightly so the cable is more in line with your lats to get the most out of it. Like and follow for And for this specific exercise, honestly, he's right. Because he's doing an exercise that is uh, engaging shoulder extension. And at that crunch at the very end, the ladies are likely just to be using their obliques in the way that that exercise is oriented. And obviously, if these ladies want to like keep a small waist, they probably don't want to be crunching their obliques. But the pressing and putting your shoulders down helps keep your lat engaged. So in a movement such as this, where there's a little more adduction, following through with the range of motion and driving your elbows down into your hip is going to help you do a longer range of motion and complete the rep. So if you say that you're doing it, doing this exercise, but with what he recommends to avoid doing any sort of crunch, then you're just gonna be doing this. And I can understand how you're gonna be engaging the lat to a certain extent with that movement, but for damn sure, you're missing out on the full range of following through with the movement, driving, and then hitting that full contraction at the bottom. And I guess that will differ based off of your flexibility. If you feel like you have smaller lats and you're super flexible and you can go all the way down to the very bottom without you having to do that crunch, then you probably don't need to. But I think um, it differs per person. Gentlemen, third exercise is a single arm, straight arm, lat pull down. It's one of my favorites, and I actually got taught this by uh, one of my original bodybuilding coaches. So, classic bodybuilding breast science. And uh, it's kind of just like the last exercise, like the single arm kneeling cable lat pull down, except for this one, you're keeping your arms straight so you don't induce any bicep overcompensation. Uh, it's a little bit more extension than adduction, unlike the other exercise. But what I like to do is, so instead of standing straight on from the cable so that you have a, uh, Say that in front of you is zero degrees, your arm is at zero degrees. I stand to the side so that my arm is at a 45 degree angle. That way 
Um, if you considered 90 degrees of, as abduction and then zero degrees as uh, extension, then you would have about 50-50 of each. Oh shit. I wish they had some more like actual credible studies on the effect of like crunching your lant. This is a little bro science, but whenever you've been using them for fun functional purposes, back in the wild, back before we were sophisticated modern creatures, you would use your lats to climb things. You used to reach and then you pull down. So like say that you're rock climbing. When you're climbing like a lat, like a lat, when you're climbing a rock or a wall, like you're climbing like this. No one ever like climbs with both hands, you know what I mean? Like people always climb with like, you reach and then you come down. And then you come up and then you try to reach and then you come down again, right? And this like continuous like lat crunching torso movement, kind of like fucking looking like Spider-Man, bro. I'm just saying, I feel like there's something behind the bro science of big ass coaches and bodybuilders that do this shit and tell you to crunch your lat at the end of the rage But I don't know, man. Oh, yeah. oh. All right, brethren. So, last exercise is the single arm cable rope. And uh, this is a little different from the last two exercises. Instead of having a little bit more prioritization and focus on your lower and your middle fibers, this has a little bit more focus on your upper fibers, which are the thoracic fibers of your lat, which is probably going to help you with a little more upper lat thickness. These are all gonna hit your lap though. The reason I implemented this one is because everybody wants a row. Everybody wants a row of some kind. So you get on one knee, you don't get on both knees unless your sub comes stretch. Up, and like this. To be honest, normally this thing is a lot higher. Oh shit. Yeah, I wish I had the other machine because I don't know why this thing is super low. Normally I have like a, a rest to rest my hip on and then something to grab. But we're just going to have to do with this straight arm. Crunch. Straight arm. Bro, the, the more up your chest is, the more you're going to hit the uh, upper fibers. The more leaned forward you are, the more you're going to hit your lower fibers. And then keep your elbow tucked in the entire time, close to your hips. I wish I had one of the other machines. Fuck. Oh. And Jack sent all into your lats. There's other rows that you can do to engage lats. But normally, vertical 
pull downs, or straight arm pull downs, any of those kind of pull down exercises, are gonna be better engaging your entire lat. But those are always a good alternative. Especially if you don't have like cables or like a pull up bar to use, and you only have dumbbells, then it's best to figure out how to hit your lats by using those dumbbells. And it's always just a row where you're tucking your elbows in. Just fine. Anyways, there's gonna be another Young LA drop sometime at the end of this month. I think it's gonna be oh, it's September 27th or something like that, but I'll keep you all updated on the Instagram stories. Thanks for coming through again, boys. This was, what is it, 12 sets? It's a little more sets than you should be doing, but it was an all lat workout for me. If you guys liked it, share it with your friends, and leave me a comment. If you, uh, if you could row seven plates and have the skinniest back in the world, or row one plate and have the biggest crisp bumps that hold back, which one would you want? This protein is from Huge Isolate, now for ten percent off. And I'll see you boys next time. All right, brethren. The fourth exercise is single cable. Cable, single, single cable, single cable chest, single chest, cable.